Okay, these are the stock settings with the stock cooler, 67 degrees Celsius at idle. This card does get up to 90 degrees Celsius during gaming. That is pretty standard for the R290. And I'll be replacing it with the cooler and we'll get back to looking at the differences. All right, so here's the AMD R290. This is the MSI reference board. And we're going to swap the cooler with a Gelid IC Vision. This is Revision 2. You have to make sure you use Revision 2 for this. Revision 1 will not work with the 290 or 290X. So we're going to go ahead and swap this out and see what kind of temperature readings we get. So unboxing shows us so we got some uh, heat sinks here. They're all Phillips. Comes with the thermal paste, which is supposed to be pretty good, and our screw set. And a nice braided cable for the fans. There's the heat sink and the fans. So step one is to um, remove the back plate if you've got one and then to disassemble the screws on the actual uh, heat sink and cooler of the original. There's one, two, three. Four, five, six screws. So this card's got six screws on it. screws have to come out that would probably be the low warranty sticker screw if they know that that sticker is on yep so the warranty is void when you do this mod so with all the screws off and two screws on the end and removing the, the end plate and then you have to just slowly like just pry it and then it'll slowly they'll release away You'll have all those pads. We've taken them off, and it's just their thermal pads. They sit on each one of these. We peeled them off. You're not going to reuse them. And they got a, a gray pad that goes across here. It's a thermal pad, and so it's it's kind of gummy. But you got to just take that off. And they supply a new one in the pack, goes across here. And that's where you're going to mount this sink. And just clean the, the main chip first. So when you're wiping down these chips, it doesn't, you don't wipe, smear some of that grease onto the. And we're using isopropyl alcohol. Pretty much the one to just wipe it until you don't see the, the gray coming off on the rag anymore and you know you got most of that crop off. As you can see. 
and you flick in this little conductor. But yep. the main thing is just the top of this chip. And then when you're wiping these, you don't want to get smeared that over to there. And you're going to wipe down each one of these chips. You can see, if you see the lint being left behind you, you get all that off too. So you can use like a dry one afterwards or a microfiber and get all the the lint off of it. And these are kind of tricky. So you got a little 3M hologram on the top on these. So you want to peel this back and the sticky pad is right there. Sometimes it sticks to this piece, sometimes to that piece, so be careful. And separate it. And make sure that when you put this on you do not have any wrinkles. And that just is very little of your fingers actually touch the sticky part because it will make it less sticky. This whole process to do this is also very tedious. Stayed on, it should look like that. And then press down. Just apply pressure. I probably wouldn't apply much pressure if it's sitting on the floor to card could bend. You could crack it, so it's better just to hold it. We just used alcohol, cleaned off the fin on the bottom, stuck on the gray heat pad, and alcoholed off the top of these with the rag. Just going to set this on top. And the holes don't line up, so we don't know what the fuck we're doing. So we'll get back to you. So basically, it looks like the holes do not match for this long heat sink right here um, we're gonna have to dremel the holes out so they did not machine this properly all right basically we need to be able to make these holes wider because they should have either made the bar wider or put wider slots in it so we're having to dremel it Because this is a universal cooler, they give you extra pieces and they didn't cover this chip right here. You can see on the stock cooler how it forms a T. And that basically would have went like that. So it would have covered that chip, that chip, that chip. They just give you this one, which will cover these two. And so we're going to have to modify our own out of an extra cooler fin that they give you for a different model of graphics card.
once you're done one, you need to make sure that there's not any little lip because usually when you cut it there'll be a little bit of lip so just use a razor blade at an angle and just scrape that off to where you just feel that it's smooth all right so we had to dremel and then modify it put a little sticky uh, one of these original little pads in between so that we can make a little T and then we modified one of the little strips by cutting it out to match and that's gonna basically create our little T that's gonna sit right there okay, so there's our modified heat sink we just used a single layer of that tape ended up working out better It'll keep that little fin from just falling off because it's only got the one little piece of the yep. adhesive underneath it. So we've had to modify one of the heat sinks so it'll fit underneath. This is the one they provide. It's a thinner one and it still is not thin enough to fit underneath it. So we had to take the thicker one and grind the fins all the way down so that it would clear underneath and actually sit on the chip. Okay, here we are. It's all finished. Um, just one other quick thing to note. This uh, VRM heat sink right here we had to dremel out the holes a little bit because they were in a little bit too far and they would not line up. We also had to mill it down because it was sitting up too high and uh, so went ahead and did that as well. Another thing of note is I'm going to use the braided cable that came with it and attach this to my uh, motherboard fan. Uh, if you do attach it to here, uh, it'll run at a 100% fan and it'll probably be a little bit too loud for you. So if you want to keep it nice and quiet, just uh, go ahead and connect it to your motherboard and use the fan control on there. So we'll see what All right, so here we are, sitting with idle temperatures with the G-Lead cooler, uh, looking at about 38 degrees Celsius. That's uh, quite a big difference from what we saw the stock cooler running at. Um, again, the trouble I had with the G-Lead installing it was uh, quite significant, so... Uh, if you can wait for the third-party uh, non-reference boards to come out, I highly suggest you do that. If you're in a hurry looking to get one right now, um, this is probably going to offer you significant uh, cooling difference, and it's probably going to compare with what you're going to be able to get for third-party. Just keep in mind, uh, this is not an e easy install whatsoever, and I highly recommend not doing this if you can afford not to. So... Um, I went ahead and kind of tweaked the system fans. System fan 2 is what the graphics card's running on right now. Um, you can see the low RPMs of the fans, so it's keeping it quite cool. We're going to go ahead and run some benchmarks. I'm going to actually do this in part 2. Um, I've been trying to test this out with Battlefield 4, and I'm starting to notice some black screen issues. I'm thinking my power supply is going to need to be upgraded. Uh, I'm running on a 730 watt RAID Max, which is under the recommended um, minimum system spec for the R290, they want a 750 watt. Granted, this card, uh, this PSU did run fine for my uh, 570 GTX. Um, I'm going to go ahead and purchase a Corsair Gold, uh, gold certified 850 watt uh, power supply. I should have that in a couple days. So, with that in mind, I'll be uh, you know running some benchmarks and stuff like that, but I can tell you for sure under uh, gaming load so far it's been um, roughly about 65 up to 70 degrees Celsius, which is significantly cooler than the stock and um, This is with an overclock on the card right now, which I'll get into in part two also so um, Hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll be posting more information shortly for you